Alright, come on. We back at it again. We talking about these New Orleans Pelicans, man. Um, I just want to start off by saying hell of a season. Um, from top to bottom. Um, Jose Alvarado, hell of a season. Willie Green, hell of a coaching job this year. Brandon Ingram, hell of a coaching job. CJ McCollum, hell of a job leading the pack after getting traded and, and putting his team in the right direction. Um, Jonas Valanciunas, hell of a job that series. You played your ass off. Um, and just everybody from top to bottom, from Jackson Hayes to Devontae Graham. Ah, Devontae Graham, you kind of irritated me because when game six, when you let whoever get the offensive rebound, I think it was Michael Bridges or Jay Crowder, you were supposed to box his ass out and you ain't box out. But I'm going to let you rock because that's just one fuck up. I'm not going to get in your case, but hell of a season. Um, Jackson Hayes, yeah. everybody on that team, like I said, from top to bottom, played their asses off and they earned my respect 1,000%. I, New Orleans next year is going to be a problem. Um, and then especially with Zion saying, you know, in, ter in regards to his contract extension, that I couldn't sign it fast enough. That's a very good sign because that's saying that you're going to have Zion for the next five years and his intent is on staying and you know his intentions now. That should, all, all the shit that the media was talking about, all the shit that people were getting on his case about him not wanting to play, all that shit is out the window now. It's out the window. He want to be there. He wants to be there. According to his words, he wants to be there. So, is y'all going to have a hell of a season next year? Um, I just think at this point, it's just experience. Like, y'all just need experience. Like, those rookies, them playing that much in that playoff season is going to drastically help them next year because they know what the playoff scenarios is like. It's going to help tone their skills. And now, it's a confidence thing now. Because now, before, they started 1-12. Um, I mean, fuck, I thought New Orleans was take it for the first pick at that point. I was like, God damn, y'all just go, y'all, y'all, this shit is damn near illegal. And then they pull it together. They made, they traded for CJ McCollum, made a push for that playing spot, um, beat the Spurs, and then they beat the Clippers. Then they pushed Phoenix to six. And that's the confidence thing because against the number one seed, you pushed them to six games where arguably game six, it took them to play a, a damn near perfect game. It took DeAndre Ayton only miss, I think, one shot. And it took Chris Paul to not miss a single shot for them to win by five. You know what I'm saying? So, when you kind of put it in that perspective, that's going to give a lot of confidence to New Orleans in terms of them feeling like they can hang with anybody in this league. And 1,000% with that team that they have, they can hang with anybody in this league. Because you got Brandon Ingram, who I already thought was a star, but he has solidified himself as 100% no conversation a star after this series. Um, CJ McCollum, I really wish CJ McCollum could have gave me one one of them CJS games that we know and love from him, like that 38 or 12 or 22 shooting. But, you know, it just didn't happen. I'm pretty sure, you know, he was just gassed. I mean, he's a lot older than the majority of the people on the team, so I'm pretty sure his legs was feeling it from playing all that basketball within the past couple of weeks. So, pretty sure he felt the wind effects of it. And also, he hasn't had to go through being the man. Even though he's not the man, he has majority of the ball handling duties, which he hasn't had before. Dame, Dame had that majority of time. He was just the guy who got it when Dame didn't want it. You get what I'm saying? So in this situation, he's the guy who gets it, and then BJ, Bi get it when CJ don't want it. So that was that was gonna take a little bit of CJ McCollum. So I'm not gonna fault him too much for it. Either way, he played well enough for them to win two games, and he played well enough for them to almost win them another game to push it to Game Seven. Um, Willie Green, uh, there's, there's there's nothing. I, there's no there's no good. There's no more. Outstanding coach, just just an outstanding coach. Like there's nothing more than I can say about it. Like there, I could give him all the praise in the world, all the praise in the world on my end. Hell of a coaching job, hell of a job, hell of a hell of a job instilling confidence in those young guys, having trust in them young guys and those guys and those rookies actually performing and actually coming through for him, not making him look bad for making for making that big. I wouldn't say a big move, but. Regularly, you don't play rookies 35 minutes in the playoffs. That doesn't happen unless you're a star rookie. And, you know, Herb Jones, outstanding year. Um, he really made himself, he really established a name for himself on the defensive end of the ball this year. Um, especially in the playoffs, too. I mean, I'm pretty sure he was a defensive guy when he got drafted. But now, like, man, he blocked two jump shots in the game. You get a salute for me. And also, he did a hell of a job on Chris Paul. Um... Jose Alvarado, hell of a job on Chris Paul. He's a, no, no disrespect to Pat Bev, but he's a more skilled and more controlled Pat Bev. Um, I've never seen, 
here's here's why Jose Alvarado will get the utmost respect for me, right? Jose Alvarado forced two eight-second violations on Chris Paul. Two. In a series. Two eight-second. Do you know how hard it is to get an eight-second violation in the NBA, bro? You can just run by them. Or they'll call a tiki tack foul if they give you too much contact. And then, also on top of that, bro, he had Chris Paul have Kevin Payne run the offense and Chris Paul was going to the corner. I ain't never seen Chris Paul be in the fucking corner. The last time I seen that shit was James Harden. And God damn it, James Harden ain't on the fucking Suns. Kevin Payne is on the fucking Suns. So, Jose Alvarado gets the utmost respect for me. And also, Chris Paul was, Chris Paul was, oh, oh my God, Chris Paul was begging for DeAndre Aiden to get a good screen so he could get Jose Alvarado off him. But, you know, of course, if it's Chris Paul from like 10 years ago, I mean, of course, it's going to be a different story. It's a 27-year-old Chris Paul versus a 37-year-old Chris Paul. But, let alone, even now, a lot of guys can't guard Chris Paul in the league. So, for Jose Alvarado to do the job he did on him, outstanding. Um, Brandon Ingram. Like I said, he solidified himself as a star, played his damn ass off. Um, yesterday, he didn't do the most scoring well. I believe he had like 21 points, which is still good. Had around six rebounds and 11 assists. So he distributed the ball at a high level, put his team almost in a situation to win. Um, Larry Nance Jr., I must say, you, you keep Larry Nance Jr. Because God damn it, the hustle he brings to the goddamn floor and them putbacks he be getting, he need to stay. He needs to stay. 1,000%. It's just... It's going to be very interesting to see how they pan out next year with their power forward situation with Zion, Jackson Hayes, and um, Larry Nance. Probably what they'll do, they'll probably institute that bench rotation. Like the bench bigs will probably be Jackson Hayes and Larry Nance. And they'll probably, whenever the bench rotation is on, they'll probably be their two bigs, um, which will be understandable. Um, but I like Jackson Hayes. I think, Jack I think Jackson Hayes played well this series. I mean, of course, he had that hard fell on Jay Crowder, but I ain't gonna lie. Jay, sometimes Jay Crowder be earning that shit. Jay Crowder be earning it. But um, other than that, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna just give all New Orleans the praise. I'm gonna give the Suns the praise. The Suns had a business. They did what they needed to do. Um, they got pushed to the limit. My Carol Bridges played outstanding. Um, in Game Five, and then Game Four. No, not Game, not Game Four. Game Six, he played well. I believe he had 17 as well, and he had some critical stops in the clutch. Um, especially that turnover with the around the one minute mark around the yeah the one to one minute and thirty second mark when they got that turnover and he dunked the ball, um, that kind of was a turning point in that game. Um, but other than that, man, hell of a series, hell of a series. Um, I told y'all this was the dark horse. I told y'all it was the dark horse, dark horse for being probably the most entertaining series. Um, and Pelicans fan, I want to let y'all. I want to. I want to hear what y'all think in the comment section. Um, how confident are y'all right now? Cause I, I, if I were y'all, I'd be mad confident what we got right now and what y'all and what y'all got right now. Um, you know, y'all, y'all, y'all have a bright future. Y'all, y'all own that Lakers pick this year, so y'all gonna have at least a top ten pick. Um, because the Lakers didn't make the fucking playoffs, of course. You know, cause we fucking garbage. I'm not gonna talk about it. I don't want to get irritated. I like, I like, I like, I like protecting my energy. So I'm not gonna waste no time on them bullshit ass fakers. Um, but. You know, if you made it just far in the video, go ahead and like the video. Um, go ahead and leave a comment. Like I said, let me know what you think about. Let me know what you think about the series and also the Pelicans in general. Um, and do you see the Suns winning the championship this year after seeing them struggle against Phoenix? Let me know about that in the comment section. And uh, yeah, man. Like I said, make sure to like the video, subscribe if you do. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you get notified whenever I upload. And yeah, man. I'm out, bro.